So before we get too far into this, I should show a seed test result that's uh, fairly average for what we're seeing this year and uh, run through it with you here. So this is a barley seed sample and you can see germination is 99%, which is pretty good. One abnormal, which might be, you know, a shrunken kernel. Um, 96 vigor, so that's basically the germination with cold stress. And when we get down into the pathogen fungal screen here, you can see we're 0.5% common root rot. So this one can be pretty serious if it starts to spread in a seed row. I've seen it wipe out quite a bit of untreated seed over the years. And uh, it, it's nothing to uh, take lightly. Um, head blight, or fusarium head blight is the next one. So that's 0% on this one. And uh, that is generally suppressed by most seed treatments out there. Same thing with the root rot fusarium here. So this also tests at zero on there. Um, so those, don't take those ones lightly. Pretty much any fungicidal seed treatment on the market will suppress those. Um, net blotch, tan spot, leaf stripe. So 0.5% on this. Um, and uh, the septoria version of that, 0.5%. So we got 1% there in total. So those are generally going to show up later on. Herbicide, fungicidal timing is leaf infections. And then when we get down into the saprophytes or weak pathogens here, we can see alternary is at 62%. So generally that's not uncommon. We see numbers between 30 and 70% on most results. Um, it's kind of a, a funny disease because it won't necessarily kill 62%, but what it'll do is it'll infect that coleoptile as it's rising towards the surface on a cereal. And it can occasionally kill seedlings before they reach the surface, but generally it's going to result in shrunken, weak, stunted plants. It will kill a certain amount of them, but uh, most will probably survive to produce shrunken heads. So it uh, won't necessarily reduce your seed stand by 62%. It might only be 20%, but it will definitely be a yield robber. Uh, the other two aren't nearly as, uh, as dangerous as the alternaria and then when you get down to the storage molds those aren't really too anything to be concerned about too much but uh, pretty much these are all easily controlled by any fungicidal seed treatment on the market the fusarium suppression so that's why a seed treatment is really good bang for your buck as far as crop protection goes and preventing that yield a couple dollars a bushel spent on seed treatment is the cheapest crop insurance you will buy all year to make sure that you have a good crop the first of the all-in-one products I'll run through pretty quick is Syngenta's uh, Cruiser Vibrance Quattro. So this is pretty much the industry standard and kind of the one to beat. Uh, it's very widely used and very well liked. Um, so this has got four fungicides in it, hence the name Quattro. So it's got quite a few different groups in it, which will really help to fight against resistance. Uh, comes in uh, cases, drums, and totes, depending on your acreage and how many bushels you want to treat. Gives you really good protection against wireworms, fusarium, and rhizoctonia, and all of the other common seedling diseases. Uh, very easy to apply. Uh, quite commonly, guys will water it down a little bit just to get better coverage on it. Uh, if it's cold out, it might be a little bit on the thick side. And... Uh, Here's, here's their results of their wheat seed testing program. So you can see it results in increased germination, fewer dead seeds, higher vigor, uh, good control in fusarium, and uh, much, much reduced total disease incidence on here. So a very good product. I wouldn't shy away from using this one at all. Bayer's Raxel Pro Shield is the other heavy hitter in the industry for seed care. So it's a very good all-in-one. It uses the stress shield to control your wire worms, um, and it has couple different fungicides in here both gr group three and four so that'll help with your resistance management uh, this one is a true systemic for controlling bunt in and smut in barley which is nice um, packaging sizes are similar jugs drums and totes depending on your acreage and uh, it, it's a very a very good seed treatment uh, very effective on wireworms. Um, Syngenta and Bayer will both argue till they're blue in the face as to whose product is going to be better for wireworms. But for all practical purposes in the field, I would rate them as about the same. And uh, yeah, so very good. Uh, pretty much can be used on all the major cereal crops, barley, oats, wheat, durum, and uh, pretty much controls all common diseases. Suppression of fusarium, just like everything else in the industry. So it's a, a very good product. And uh, based on Bayer programming, this could be a good fit for you. So the last of the all-in-one products I'm going to talk about today is the New Farm Nipsit Suite. So this is a really good product for those guys that don't care about the grower programming. Uh, it's an all-in-one, all-in-one jug and uh, has two groups of fungicide, group 3 and 4, plus a group 4 insecticide in here for your wireworm. Uh, very effective. 
uh, controls the same diseases pretty much as every other seed treatment on the market and would be comparable wireworm control for uh, medium to low density. And if you're really concerned about wireworm, you can add more of the uh, Nipsit inside to increase your wireworm control. And uh, yeah, so all in all, very good product. It's going to be priced very competitively compared to a Cruiser or a Raxel. This is going to be basically the same price point as a fungicide only, but will have the insecticide built into it. So the first of the fungicide only seed treatments I'm going to talk about here is going to be the Rancona Trio. This one's been around for a few years. It's got a really good three-way blend of fungicides in here, the Ipconazole, Carbathin, and the Metalaxyl, which is going to give you really good control on all of the common seed-borne diseases, as well as Fusarium. So it's compatible with all of your cereal crops, barley, wheat, durum, and it's also going to be tank mixable with uh, your Stress Shield, your Cruiser, Lumivia, Sombrero, as far as wireworm control goes. So um, it's going to be pretty easy to use, no dilution required, everything's all in one jug, except for your insecticide of course and uh, really a very good product um, so they got some trial data here that are showing so eight trials are showing a, a yield bump versus Raxel Pro and uh, three trials are showing a plant stand count bump versus Raxel in untreated and uh, as far as programming goes if you're buying Everest for wild oat control or uh, Inferno Duo for burn down then it might be really worth taking a look at this product it might be a really good fit for you and the last of the fungicide only seed treatments I'm going to go over today is BSF's Insure Cereal. So this is another good product. This is another three-way blend of fungicides, group 3, 4, and 11 in managed resistance. Very effective against Fusarium as well as all the other common seed-borne diseases. Um, has a vigor trigger as well, so it's going to help increase your vigor in cold soil conditions and so on and so forth. Um, pretty much registered in all your major cereal crops, and you it is compatible with with the insecticides out there so stress shield cruiser lumivia um, you can mix all of them with it however it is sequential application so you need to apply your fungicide which would be this first and then go back and apply your insecticide on top so be aware of that if you're a big bsf customer then uh, the programming might make this attractive to you and it is a good product Here's a new product from Corteva for this year. So this is the Lumivia. So this is Chlorantranilaprol, which is the uh, active ingredient from uh, Corrigin. And this is now registered as a seed treatment for cereals, peas, and lentils here in Canada. And this will give you really good control of wireworms, cutworms, armyworms, and pea leaf weevils right mixed with your seed treatment. So this is, uh, it's showing some real promise because this is for the first time we're going to have something here that's going to actually be able to actually kill wireworms not just make them paralyzed or sleep for the year so we should actually see a reduction in wireworm numbers in the field of course it's also going to be very effective on cutworms if you've had cutworm problems you know how much of a pain that can be so this will definitely be worthwhile trying out uh, you can see here you're having a much increased efficiency on wireworms Way more plants are going to be still alive in the seed row after insect feeding versus even a standard insecticidal seed treatment, especially versus an untreated check. So here's just a picture of the efficiency on wireworms. You can see quite a bit thicker stand there. Um, cutworm, very effective. On lentils, showing effectiveness. And on peas, much, much better compared to a fungicide only when in the presence of cutworms. So as far as mixability goes, BASF is recommending it to be mixed with their Insure cereals and uh, Corteva is, seems like they're going to support it mixed with Vibrance Max or with Raxel. However, I would also talk to your Syngenta or Bayer rep about that because uh, Syngenta and Bayer may have a different opinion on that, but we will know more in the next few weeks or so as this product continues its rollout. So after all that, which seed treatment should you choose to use on your farm? Well, when it really comes down to it, coverage is going to be more important than the brand name on these. So you can see over here on the right, I've got, uh, this is a picture I took this spring in the seed row. This was commercially treated and uh, you can see this bottom seed here, probably 40 to 50% coverage. And the seed up above it where the wire room is feeding here is probably 10 to 15% coverage. So pretty poor results on this. And you can see which seed the wire room chose to feed on. You can see it's feeding site right here. 
Now, this wire room did manage to pick up enough cruiser that it was very lethargic and partially paralyzed. It was still moving, but it was very slow, so it was still somewhat effective. But I can guarantee you, if we're seeing results at poor here, there's probably seed in the seed row that has basically no treatment on it at all. So overall, all products are going to be very effective on controlling disease. Uh, they all have very good fungicides. They're all going to be fairly equal when it comes to controlling all of those listed diseases. Um, coverage is going to be more important in this case than brand name. Programming is going to determine your final price. So if you're you know, big on Syngenta programs, then you're going to want to look at that Vibrance Max. If you're big on the Bayer Value program, then the Raxel is probably going to be the way to go. If you want to ignore programming, stay with New Farm. Is it being custom applied? If you have a custom applicator coming in, most of them only have so much tank space on their commercial seed cheaters, and they will usually, in order to keep things simple for themselves, they will only work with one or two different brands. So if you're getting it custom applied, talk to your seed treater, he'll recommend a product to you. So now we come to the fun part, which is other treatments. And I'm sure you've had at least one traveling salesman stop in your farm gate to talk to you about these ones. So, what are these products? Well, there's fertilizers, which are applied directly onto the seed. There's live bacteria. There's humix, beneficial fungus, worm castings, herbal tea, seaweed, cactus juice, industrial byproducts, unknown substances, snake oils. And be wary of any pictures you see like this, because as agronomists and salesmen, we love to take pictures like this in the field, comparing one product to another, but it's just not realistic. You know, if, if I move 20 feet and I, I take a different sample from here, maybe this one looks the best. Maybe this one would look the best. Maybe this one would look horrible. It's just going to depend on exactly the spot in the field. And unless you're digging up 100 feet of seed row and comparing that side by side with 100 feet of another one, which nobody, I guarantee you, nobody's doing, this is just an unrealistic comparison in the field due to field variability. So how do they work? Well, most get results by improving your early plant health, resulting in better disease tolerance and faster growth. So the beneficial fungus and bacteria can help with early nutrient uptake and nutrient package could be right on the seed, which is as good as it gets for fertilizer placement. And extremely aggressive salesmen. There's a lot of these guys and they got goals to meet and targets to meet. And uh, they will tell you anything that you want to hear to make you buy their product. And uh, this, this picture has nothing to do with uh, disease or anything. This is just showing frost damage on uh, barley seedlings. What they are not. They do not cure or prevent disease, but they can increase tolerance to pest pressure. And the same is true for insect control. These products will give you no insect control at all. Many will have no PMRA registrations or impartial testing on that. So may have no warranty if, test, if pests become a problem and always ask for your PMRA registration number. The reputable companies will have registration through the PMRA on this. So that's companies like Soil Aid and ATP Nutrition. The uh, more fly-by-night companies, um, legally they do not need to have a registration for what they are and they will tell you that, but uh, the more reputable companies will have a PMRA re registration and uh, an SDS safety data sheet for their product out there. So that's something to, to watch for. Uh, this particular picture here, this I took uh, in April of uh, 2019. So this was a popular herbal tea product that was applied on barley seed um, instead of a conventional fungicide seed treatment. Wire worms ended up coming in and wiping out about 30 to 40% of the plant stand. Luckily it was seeded very heavily for a silage crop, so it was still able to deliver a decent grain yield, but uh, if you were seeding on the light side, this could have been absolutely disastrous. So, and as to see external testing results, so this would be from like a third party lab, such as like Hammond Egg or somebody like that, or the research station. Most of these companies may not have any external results other than their fancy side by side pictures. Talk to your agronomist for their opinion. Most of us, we've had at least some experience with many of these products, although it seems like there's new ones every year. And where do they excel? Well, when they're used with a proper registered seed treatment is where they really shine. They should be seen as an add-on to a seed treatment and not a replacement. So we can see increased early season growth and better root development when these products are applied. 
higher vigor in cold soils is also good to see. Um, we haven't had that problem in the last couple of years, but uh, there's always next year. I hope this information was of some use and interest to you, so if you appreciated it, please uh, like and subscribe, and we'll see you next week.